are the women participating? Because I am even going to tell the women not to go and dance anymore at any function. We are not dancers. We, or rather, we are not entertainers. Whenever they want to entertain, they go and look for the women, carry buses, go around collecting women to come to the rally and come and dance. Is that our function? Have you asked the women to talk? Women of Kenya were fighting hand in hand with the Africans who were fighting the colonialists. You know the movement of Mau Mau. All the grown up men were arrested. Others went to fight in the forest. Others were detained. Others ran away from the country. And then who was left in running the country? It was nobody but women and small children. They were cooking for them. They were running the country. They were the ones spying for their brothers and, and uh, their brothers and husbands and their sons. And they were working very hard. Some of them were arrested. Some young ones were even in the forest with their brothers. They were all detained. Majority of Central Kenya people were in detention, imprisoned, and those was others were in the forest fighting. So when the cake comes, it is men who eat. <laughs> and tell women, wait, for, wait, wait a bit. The party is usually seen as the hub around which the wheel of politics, which is supposed to drive democracy, turns. It is expected, therefore, that the structure and management of the political parties must themselves be model democratic institutions whose affairs are run by appropriate constitutional guidelines. In Nigeria, there are over 40 registered and INEC recognized political parties, each with its own constitution. The written words of these constitution set out the party's broad objectives, membership rights and responsibilities, obligations of the party to the members, the various organs of the party, funding and accounts of the party, internal discipline, nomination and elections into party and public offices. Some, like the People's Democratic Party, go so far as to spell out the party's stand on equal opportunities with regard to the federal character principles. The party has a provision for its working committee, National Working Committee, which is the highest, uh, that's neck, mm, uh, the, the, the neck. And it says that in nomination for party offices, at least 15% shall be allocated to women. That's in the PDP constitution. Mm. But it is not being complied with. And they cannot be held accountable because in their constitution they have ouster clauses which says party members cannot hold the party accountable in these matters. So they've given with the right and taken away with the left. That is the written word, the guiding principle of the game. What are the realities on ground? What is the game plan? Or could it be the war plan? One of the parties actually issues out what it calls a survival kit, given a clue that the politician needs all she can muster to navigate successfully around the workings of the party, as in a minefield. In this country, you cannot achieve any political power as an individual only through a political party. In other words, you must understand the workings of the political party. If you don't, you will always be left out. What are these workings of the political parties? How democratic are they? Political parties in Nigeria, unlike in other countries, are like supreme. They have been so institutionalized that their decisions are final, even almost above the constitution and above the electoral act, and this ought not to be. Most of the parties are funded by uh, people who become invariably the owners of the party. So what happens 
within the party is as determined by these funders. In other words, there's no internal democracy. And thirdly, these owners are virtually men. Let's hear from the parties. PDP is a uh, gender friendly um, because the party realized that uh, they cannot get any person in power without the support of Nigerian women. Uh, we all know the percentage of Nigerian women. We all know that um, if a woman believes in something, it's difficult to change her mind. So they are more trusting. Men trust them more uh, than they trust themselves. So um, they realize that and they know that the woman must be carried along. So um, in the party manifesto, we have it there that the party shall ensure the 30 percent in the manifesto that is 30 percent uh, uh, achieved uh, but in the constitution we have 15 percent but even that 15 percent we have not yet achieved it and uh, we are still working towards that in pdp uh, we are very very gender sensitive and very gender friendly to the women folk um, we don't charge them any fees at all, either for the forms or any other administrative costs. We allow women to participate free so that uh, we can get as many of them as possible to participate in politics. So that is the policy of the PDP. Um, the AMPP in Anambra State of Fruit has been a party for all. If we look at 1999, for example, you can agree with me that the party has actually carried along women. We want to remind ourselves of somebody like uh, Linda Ibazu, who went to the House of Representatives as a member of APP then, now NDP. We want to make mention also of our Bubak candidate for that election in 1999, in the person of uh, Chief Mrs. Joe Yamode, now Senator of the Federal Republic and many other women like that. So you can agree with me that the party actually in Anambra State and even in, uh, nationally has all, all along been carrying uh, the women folk along. In the political party um, constitution, actually there's no provision for women, any percentage whatsoever. And I've been pushing that, but I've all been alone. You know, this party is called Democratic people's party. Men and women, we should all belong to that party. It is democratic people's party. So only people that believe in democracy that should come. If only men come, so be it. And if only women come, so shall it be. But to make a special provision that women should be encouraged to come. You know, it is as if we are saying the standards for democracy for women is different from the standards for democracy for men. We don't believe in that. Our next speaker describes the working of her party at the state level before she herself was brought in as a caretaker chairperson to re-engineer affairs. Well, actually, it is from the party. And uh, it was the past leadership. There was uh, absolute corruption. Money was exchanging hands. And then the highest bidder got the ticket. And uh, in fact, the primary election was you know, put off about four times. They didn't want to even hold the primaries until we had to put pressure on the past leadership before they you know, put up the primary election. So they just wanted to give the ticket out like that. Intra-party democracy presupposes elimination of non-constitutional means in arriving at party decisions. Some of these non-constitutional means include the overriding influence of identified power brokers. In some cases, the influence of these power brokers are said to be so extensive that parties have been described as shareholdings in which the largest shareholders hold sway. Right now, most of these things are left to the whims and caprices of the people who call the shots in the parties. And it is not any one party. 
almost all the political parties of name in this country suffer from that uh, malice or, or, or sickness. So women are at a bigger disadvantage because of the absence of internal party democracy, which means one person could just sit and produce the list of who runs for office under any party platform. How is the woman politician to survive this powerful mind? As long as you have a good control of the state chairman or the local government chairman, when it comes to decision, the power broker calls only that person. It's not the entire group. You must understand this. And it is this person that chooses or goes about talking to one or two members of his ESCO who influence the entire group. All right? And you don't achieve that by staying away. You must act. You must, you must force yourself. You must present yourself. The Constitution is quite clear, but the governors, the parties have allowed the governors to hijack their powers. Because you see, most of the time, the political parties do not have a mechanism for raising funds or anything like that. So they rely on the governors. And they are in a situation where they cannot afford to annoy their governors, so to speak, because they rely on them for funding. So they literally allow them to, well, I wouldn't say get away with murder, but get away with whatever they want to do. In fact, most parties seem have handed over their political power, which they should be using to discipline, to maintain um, equity. They have handed all these over to the governors. And this is really what, why the parties have become weak and the governors have become very, very strong, whereas it should be the other way around. It should be the parties controlling the governors. Who is affected when intra-party democracy is not adhered to? Unfortunately, it affects every party member, but affects women most, because ab initio, we're in few numbers. Secondly, we are the weaker contributors to the well-being of the party. And then thirdly, the spaces for division are not divided in our presence because of our paucity in numbers and because of our low position in the parties. So when it is compounded by an absence of internal party democracy, it becomes a compounding factor. How are women actually marginalized within the party? What are the methods used? How can they be overcome? The whole um environment sees the girl child or the woman as somebody who should be indoors and not be out there with the people and they ask the questions such as is she going to attend the caucus meetings at midnight who is she going to leave her children her, her, her children for or her husband for so these are the issues during my campaigns when i was contesting you know i had to leave home because every person is important you need to see the religious leaders, you need to see the, um, all the stakeholders in the community. Uh, you need to see the youth leader, you need to see the elderly, you need to see those that have a say. You need to see all of them. And such visitations do not happen in the afternoon or in the morning. It happens late in the night. So there was a time I had to leave home as late as 10 o'clock. And uh, when my campaign committee came, they had to tell my husband that, okay, tonight you have to bid Haja good night because we're going out. We may not come back until early in the morning. And true, true, we didn't come back until 7 a.m. From 10 in the night, we had to go through all the 12 wards of my constituency. And there was activity. At 2 a.m., 3 a.m., there was activity. People were waiting for us. A former chairman of the ruling party, posits a reason why some of their meetings hold at night. The, the odds are generally against women, like you said. Uh, in Nigeria today, 
just like in Russia now, most of the decisions are taken at night. Uh, Nigeria is a country managed by day but governed by night. Um, most of the meetings take place very late. Why? During the afternoon, the traffic is far too heavy in the offices of uh, the, the executive arm, even the legislature, and even the party. You are at the party headquarters, and you're seeing averagely 70 people a day for one reason or the other, who people want a note to go and see a minister, or to go and see a governor, or to somebody stranded somewhere and needs money to get the children out of hospital, somebody has died, they can't bury, it goes on and on. Things which are all the result of a poorly structured economy resulting in extreme poverty, and therefore turning the attention on a small populace. So when you want to meet, you say, let's meet at night. Meeting begins at 10 p.m. Uh, it's a lot of coffee and sometimes chicken and, and suya, and everybody is uh, eating and talking. But like you said, a woman, married woman, even on night, those meetings, 1 a.m., 2 o'clock, 3, I mean, I remember when I was chairman to resolve the nominations, the primaries for 1983 election, 2003 elections. We'd begin sitting at 8 p.m. and finish our meetings at 4 a.m., sometimes 6. It went on for three weeks because we had to look at every dispute in every constituency. We called those who were quarreling to find out what the dispute was so as not to take an unjust decision. Funding is another area where the party can hold sway. Sierra Jibrin's experience with our party in the Babangida dispensation speaks volumes. Somebody heard me and they called me. I was in Lagos that time. I said, Madam, what is it about $500,000? I tell you, I took a, risk, took a drop from Ikecha Airport to Ibadan. 10 o'clock in the night, risking my life. An old senator, an old man, followed me to, seek one, to, 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 to go and talk to an old uh, man. Who said no? They were, they were supporting a, 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 a late general, era of respected memory, and that they couldn't also support me. So when they heard that, I went back, and one old man, an Yoruba old man, Baba, old Ajayi, the man said, look, Sarah, the only thing I can do for in this old age is to give up this $500,000. Take the check. I was given a check. He endorsed, please pay this money immediately. It was not a dot check. So I took off, even with the rain drizzling on me, after not sleeping the whole night, went to the party headquarters to beat the 12 o'clock deadline. They deposited at the check with the photocopy and entered a bus in rain and came to Abuja. That was Saturday night. In the morning, I, I headed for Aja Aisha Ismail's house because she was the, now the commissioner for uh, women, uh, Women's Commission. Ma, somebody has raised this check. This is a copy of the check. I want the Women's Commission to stand as a guarantee should this anything happen to this check. And she got up. They went to see the, the then president or uh, chairman of PDP, Ambassador Gane Kinkipi. Actually, at the National Assembly that time, we are supporting Mr. Jibril. We are the guarantors of this check. And somebody was supposed to go to Lagos to go and cross check. I don't think anybody traveled. And I finished that. They interviewed me because of the women's voice, that uh, women's voice. And I was allowed and I was told by uh, uh, Ambassador Gane uh, 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 Kinkibe that, yeah, Madam, because of you, your, on your own uh, 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 recognition and the support of the women, we are allowing you to come into the presidential interview. And indeed, I went through. And they asked me how I was going to raise money. I said, I had a book written. And I left back to Lagos to, to follow up on the check. Just for me to get to Lagos early in the morning because I went by night bus. First thing I saw was Sarah Jibri's uh, disqualified. We know that people talk about challenges and the first one you come up with is funding. A woman um, in most parts of this country cannot inherit property, cannot even own property. So how on earth are you going to come up with the kind of money that you are required to come up with to be able to participate. Another method of marginalization is the manipulation of delegates for party primaries, especially at the ward 
and local government levels. Even the simplest act of who is elected as delegate can befuddle the unwary party member who is unable to decipher the abracadabra that comes to play. There is not a single time I saw people voting delegates. Before we know it, they are already selected, they are delegates. Oh. 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 If the politician's delegate is able to scale through, other methods may be utilized to thwart her aspirations. When it was quarter to go, maybe two, three days before the elections proper. The, the party elections. Yes, this was primaries actually. Yes, okay. This was just primaries. Their song changed. Oh yes, their song changed. Say, ah, well, you see, um, you, you, you have to look for more money. Yes, we'll endorse you, but you see, you have to go and look for plenty of money. I said plenty of money. What are you going to use the money for? What do you need the money for? Ah, they said the people have to be settled. Usually, these ward elections are expected to be held simultaneously, but that was not the case in this local government area. The elections were to be done open secret ballot and they were all to be simultaneously at 9 a.m. My, my own local government, Numa, they didn't start there. They did, neither did they in Lamude. All of them, they all teamed up and went to Demsa lo local government and they finished their first in the local government. I, I came second there in the local government. Then they went to Lamude. So they now ordered the people that they should queue rather than the secret writing and throwing the ballot, that they should queue because they had been giving them money and I really worked in that local government because I knew he was the, the, my rival, you know. I, and he was afraid of losing. So they came there to physically intimidate the people and to see who had been collecting their money and would now want to throw them away, you know. When my, my coordinator protested, they prevailed on people to kill and counting was done physically rather than the open secret ballot. There I came second, beating the incumbent at the Federal House of Assembly at that time. The morning they finished in Lamude, they now came back to Newman, all of them again to the hall where the election is to take place. That was afternoon then, between one or two, the election that should have taken place since nine. Don't go with losers, so don't go with losers. And they physically started sharing money there. Don't go with losers. So that's how people were intimidated and brainwashed into going with the so-called winning, winning team. Who then are delegates beholden to? The ideals of the party, their conscience, or the highest bidder? The woman politician, or any politician for that matter, who is able to make it as the party's nominee for an elective post, may be confronted by what seems inexplicable and subtly undemocratic. The mind of substituting her name with another, or of being asked to give up her democratically one nomination for someone else who may not even be popular with the electorate. I contested, but unfortunately, um, I didn't get the ticket. And I felt that um, what happened during the contest was very unfair. I walked out of the whole thing during the when the, we were doing the primaries. I walked out of the 